Good morning. It's almost Friday. Yeah. Today's Thursday. Welcome to On TV's Mornings with Luann and Tim. We have some huge breaking news. Go. Yes. The sale of Algoma Steel got one step closer yesterday. An agreement in principle was reached about the sale of the Port of Algoma. Oh, the Port of Algoma. Yes. So that just as is part of the big Algoma package, of course. Right. Because so the potential sale of that is going to make it even more attractive, right? Wow. Yeah, isn't that awesome? The Port of Algoma, that whole thing. Now, I actually was in touch with them, and at some point they were going to come on the show. I don't uh -huh. know if they're still going to be able to if they don't own it anymore. Oh, I wonder. But anyway, you I didn't are. understand the whole logistics of that. It was it was really complicated because what it is, it is, is one corporation selling off to a subsidiary corporation to run things. And yes. it's out there. Oh, there's a picture of the Port yes. of Algoma right there. Yes. So my understanding was that uh, the uh, SR Algoma leased the port to the people who own the port or the other way around. Very complicated, mm -hmm. don't understand, but it's it's gonna be sold. So Justice Haney apparently said that the asset purchase agreement is should be approved, so he's recommending it, and commended the parties on reaching an agreement in oh. principle, saying that the sale transaction will be in the best interests of Algoma and its stakeholders. That's us. Are That's we us. stakeholders? Because we well, live here. Well, yeah, <laughs> the we people can say who, we're stakeholders. No, they mean the people who yes. actually are invested in it. So now they're hoping, like, by, from what I understand, in, sometime in September, they're hoping for, like, a final word on it. So we're going to follow up and Luan, get some more details. Do we know who's buying it? And do a it? news update. Do, did somebody actually buy, how did that, did you talk to anybody about who's actually buying there's SR no Algoma? Name, there's no name released yet. It's a no name. It's a no Loblaws name. Loblaws is buying yes. it. <laughs> I've heard several different things. Have you? BC, a company in BC. Be nice if it was a Canadian. Yeah, I heard a, a guy in Massey. Was a just, guy in Massey? No, I didn't hear that. <laughs> you just made that I'm up. just lying. Fake I'm news. lying. Fake news. You almost got sucked right I in I almost there. did. A guy in yeah. Massey's going to buy the steel plant. Cool. Yeah, he's sitting in his backyard on his lawn chair right now going, yeah. I think I'll just. Why not? Yeah, how much is it? Yeah, a I've couple. I've got that kicking around two the barn. Two tree mill. I got two tree mill. <laughs> two tree mill. I yeah. got that. No problem. So that's so, exciting. Yeah, so we're going to follow that up. Part of Algoma <clears throat> is also. Has been approved for, for sale. sale. And that could be part of the package. I get it And now. of course, Mayor Provenzano is thrilled because. As I said, it makes the package of the steel plant look even more attractive, obviously. Have, have we so figured out what's going on happy. with him and Rory Ring yet? Is that what do you mean? Well, I mean, the, who, what, what happened? Well, there's there a was discrepancy. mixed discrepancies. Um, and Rory then, Ring is um, the former CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, in case you didn't know. He's running as a mayoral candidate in the upcoming municipal election. And he called out the mayor very aggressively, uh, talking about how he thinks the numbers with regards to how much the city is getting back in back taxes from Algoma. He, Rory Ring says the numbers are wrong and we're losing more money than the mayor is indicating. So right. he's he's telling everyone that the, he thinks the mayor's numbers are skewed. He used the word boondoggled. Boondoggled, yes. The but the mayor in his reaction is sticking very, very, very diligently to his information and is showing numbers and so it's just a matter of i think a lot of it is a matter of number interpretation okay it's how you spin it well it's like ratings right yeah somebody out there thinks we're number one my mother <laughs> uh. <laughs> but you know what i mean like you can make it work I, you, I mean i tend to creative accounting right Creative accounting is, is I've heard that the term. term before. Now, what I've now to me, a vested interest, an interested person who's been on this issue for four years, like the mayor, t to me, it makes sense that he's been, like, there first. Yeah, so, okay. So he's so. got all the background. But then on Rory's part, he says that he's been working with, once again, yes. stakeholders and, yes. and small businesses, and he's been paying Absolutely. attention. And he's saying that what's happened over these past years is that Smaller businesses in Sault Ste. Marie have had to pick up the slack for the taxes that weren't there from Algoma. Right. And so this payback is not enough to, to help them out with the increase 25%, I think, in some Although cases. he is admitting so. that because um, it's phenomenal to me, too, considering that so many dollars in tax dollars were owed to the city, that it's the incredible. city was able to use reserves. It's so in that my we mind, in my mind, kudos, man. Well, so like we don't owe money to anybody. We're just now refilling the reserves with 
from what I understand, the money that we're going to People finally get. People sometimes ask me if I would consider going to politics. <laughs> me and, too. And this is the answer. No. Because you know what? I would just sit there and go, how's my hair? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> What I would do, I, you know what, I'm, I'm vocal to a certain extent, so it would be hard for me not to say, like, I don't, you're complicating this or you're not. My issue is, Christian says one thing, I'm like, yeah, what he said. And then Rory speaks and I go, what he said. And then Christian, and what he said. And I just like, I don't know. Yeah. You got to really, you got to really and you know what? That's, do your homework. And the bottom line is, is We've do our voting is a voters. privilege and you need to do your homework. So read anything you can get your fingers on with regards to the tax, essentially positive. That's the way I'm looking at it. We're getting some oh. money that has been owed to us, us as in the city, and I think that's an awesome, positive thing. I think elections are cool. <laughs> do you? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm excited now. I'm an election nerd, though. I'm sorry. I'm kind of the, I do like a little bit of excitement in you my do? life. You do, yes. And these guys, I, listen, I like them both personally. Yes. So I do. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I'm not going to talk about who, who I'm no. going to support. All I'm going to say is Well, that it's not our job, right, to do that? No. It's our job to it's sort of give you the information and, and let you decide. You decide, but let's have fun reading and learning yes. and listening and paying attention. And please that's read and learn. That's the important thing. And the other thing is, too, you know, I, th I know that uh, Mr. Prov Mayor Provenzano said something about he felt personally, you know, attacked, like that it was his, his credibility had been sure. attacked by Rory. Sure. And I think, you know, at some point you've got to go, oh, well, this is professional. Like, I mean, this is the way, this is politics. Pol it, and maybe we're not used to it at a local level that it can get like this, down and dirty, but sometimes it does. I understand the personal attack feeling, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, the mayor needs to, you know, fess so, up. And, yeah. I mean, he's the, he's the mayor. It's hard not to take it personally when I you're being called out. I know. I mean, you as said, an I, I see, what am I talking about? I see one negative comment about me on Facebook and I'm calling my mother. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I know. See, that's why I wouldn't do politics no, my either. Thin, my I get one bad letter to the editor, I'd skin. never leave my house. My thin is too skin. My thin is too skin. My skin too. is too thin. You know what? What? Speaking of craziness and anything that you want to have to excite your life, yes. like you said, there was this. Facebook event, a satirical Facebook event took place. Oh. So uh, a, a bunch of friends who live in BC, sorry, in Washington. State? Well, no, well, yes. British Columbia is right next to Washington State. Yes, Washington State. The, in Seattle. They said what we should do is send the forest fire smoke from BC back to Canada. So we should get box fans on all, all of our ceiling or, or all on our on all of our roofs, roofs. and Love send it back. back. People followed up on that. They were making a joke. They posted it on Facebook, no. and people were actually taking it very seriously. Fifteen hundred were going to attend the event, event. and twenty six hundred people said they were interested. People, that's why you need to educate yourself and really need to know as much as you can know. This, and this is exactly how you end up with Donald Trump as your president, people. <laughs> like, can you imagine? Seattle, there's like, there, there's You're some... You're putting fans on your roofs to blow the smoke back to Canada? Are you out of your trees? Mm -hmm. Yeah. America. Not in Seattle, I'm, my apologies. God bless Spokane. America. Spokane, Washington. Never mind, we're this not doing place. much better with... Ford and education. Oh, I'm so mad. Don't even get me started. I'm going to go talk about what's on the show today because if okay. I start talking about Ford, my ears are going to turn what's red. What's on the show today? Okay. Um, <laughs> we're going to have some fun this morning. I Skyped an interview yesterday with Glenn Foster. Now, if you don't know who Glenn Foster is, then watch the interview because you'll, I swear you'll recognize him. He's a Canadian comedian. He's also known as that Canadian guy. I just happened to come across in our community calendar that he's performing tonight at Sue Blasters, they bring some incredible talent in at Sue Blasters. They've mm -hmm. had um, uh, Nellian and, yeah. uh, and Kenny Evers' Spenny, and they had the WTF Festival. Anyway, Glenn Foster's performing tonight, like $10 in advance, 15 at the door, 20 at the door. Anyway, the interview's coming up with Glenn. He's a funny guy. And then later on in the show, Nicole Lamoureux and Coach Katrina are going to be here because Nicole has a new business called Peace of Mind, Cooking for Wellness, and also Kickstart Your Health. So we're going to get healthy in the second half of the show and find out about what's going on, about 
uh, eating properly and working out and maybe even a little bit of veganism. Ooh. Would you ever do that? No. <laughs> I'm a carnivore. Well, let's find out how it all works. So stay with us. And Luann has more news coming up on Mornings with Luann and Tim. We'll be right back after this message. Skype with Glenn Foster, otherwise known as that Canadian guy. Glenn, is that how most people refer to you when they see you around town? Oh, for sure, man. I it's it's so weird. Like I'll, I'll see people, you know, and they're looking at me like, and I know I kind of think, you know, this guy might know me, and and they'll just look and they'll go, uh, "Are you that Canadian guy?" Because they don't <laughs> remember my name. So, Glenn, I uh, came across the poster for your. Uh, a, a upcoming appearance now. This, this is I'm talking to you on Wednesday, but we're going to air this Thursday morning, and that is the morning that you're going to be appearing that evening at Sioux. You're Blasters. ruining. You're ruining the magic now. I know. It, I'm I, actually I, in the Sioux right now here in the morning show. Well, what's your bedroom from Oakville doing in Sioux Saint Marie? <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't make your I bed. should have green screened myself into a nicer office. I was going to say, you couldn't this even is, make uh, your bed, Glenn? This is a uh, spare room slash office, and it's just all piled with crap. Well, that's okay. Because you're going to be here in Sioux. How are you getting to the Sioux? Are you flying up? You're driving up? What's going on? We're flying up. That's the way you do it. Late in the afternoon. Good, good for you. And it's going to be your first return to the Sioux in a number of years. Is that right? I think. It's honestly, the last time I remember being up there was got to be 1991. I was doing a tour of northern Michigan, and there happened to be a Sioux date. Ah. Now, was that, was, was that on the American side or the Canadian side? I'm not sure. Possibly the American side. I've been on the uh, Canadian side, but that's so long ago, I, I don't even remember, honestly. Wow, well, we're awfully glad you're coming up. I was so surprised because, I mean, um, I consider you a comic of great stature, actually, in our country. I have seen you many times on television. I know that I've seen your hour. You have two different hour specials, right, that have been on, um, yep. on the Comedy Network? on the Network. Comedy Network. Comedy, they're called Comedy Now, I think. Yes, all, yes. Although... All, all, Although the uh, the most recent was 2010, so that has to be called Comedy Then. Comedy Then. I did notice that your hair is a little more silver than the last time I saw you on your Comedy Network specials, I think. Is that possible? Yes. I think so. Um, uh, I only heard a snippet of that question. Oh, so. I just said that you're, you've gotten old, is what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, I have. But no, yeah. how long no, the, you... um, yeah. the the last time I was on television was Just for Laughs uh, in 2014, which would have aired in 2015. The next time I'll be on television is actually uh, September uh, 13th, which will be part of the Winnipeg Comedy Festival. Oh, that's a, uh, the Winnipeg Comedy Festival, those ones on, when I got to watch those snippets on television, they're always hysterical. You've also done the Halifax Comedy Festival, the Mike Bullard Show, and then uh, I don't, I'm not familiar with the CBC radio show that you're on, The Debaters. You're not familiar with the debaters? No, I'm not. I'm sorry. The <laughs> debaters is, is is a very popular show on CBC Radio. It's been running quite a number of years now. Now I'm going to have uh, to And it's it's an excellent show. It's uh, they get you know pick a topic and put one comedian on one side and another comedian on the other, and it's uh, oh, that it's a great like show. That. I mean, those some of those live tapings they get upwards of a thousand people. Well, it's going to be a thousand and one from now on. Are you a good debater? Like, would you consider yourself a master debater? <laughs> ah, sorry, been uh, I, I, I win my share, but I often get put in, because I'm the only uh, slightly conservative uh, comic, uh, they tend to put me, I don't know if you listen to CBC Radio at all, but it generally just comes out of the left speaker. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so I, 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 I win and lose my share, but I also get put in these positions where, like, for example, I had to argue for nuclear power in British Columbia, <laughs> against bicycles in British Columbia, uh, against the auto pack in Oakville. Uh, so they, they generally pick me when they need a villain. You know, I, I'm Snidely Foster. I got to get myself a top hat and a twisty mustache. That's okay. I'm definitely checking that out. That sounds like a lot of fun. You've been in this business for? Did you say something like thirty over thirty-five years? It's it's it, it's over thirty mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, I'll say uh, no day job, no real day job since about 1985, 86. Wow. 
that to to get that kind of work in Canada as a stand-up comic is pretty remarkable. You must tour to the states too, do you? Uh, hardly hardly ever been to the states. Actually, I've been to the UK a few times, uh, but uh, not much in the states. Well, not really. So much of your content. Working on that. So much of your content is Canadian-based. I mean, we get the jokes. You'd have to probably do a little more setup if you were traveling to other countries, right? But I mean, we we clue in right away when you start talking about all the Canadian stuff you talk about. Um, how did you get started in comedy? Where, I mean, you grew up, you said, where did you st uh Cambridge, Ontario. Cambridge. And then grew up in Cambridge, uh, but I, I lived in Oak... Uh, the fa my family has lived in Oakville since 1977. Okay. And other, other than me living in uh, L.A. for a year and Toronto for a while, uh, pretty much Oakville. Okay, so how did it all start? I mean, how does it... I, I never under, quite understood that, how a person just decides to try stand-up comedy. That's just uh, foreign to me. Wanted to meet girls, couldn't play guitar. <laughs> uh, I did my first shows in high school, actually, no uh, long before I ever did any kind of uh, amateur night or anything like that. So I, I guess I always had a comedy bent. And what a career you've had. So uh, not only have you appeared on all those amazing television shows at those different festivals as well, you are a Gemini nominee, Gemini for a Best Individual Performance in a Comedy or Program Series for Comedy Now in 2001, nominee for the Canadian Comedy Award for Television, Best Writing in a Special Episode for That Canadian Guy, 2000 and, 2001 was a great year for you, wasn't it? It's an honor just to be nominated. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, 2000 was kind of a kind of a breakout year because that was the year that my first comedy special, That Canadian Guy, actually aired, and, and the in, the internet was sort of in its infancy, uh, and I was one of the first people to have a website, which was thatcanadianguy.com, no wow. uh, which I mentioned during the uh, the show. So every time it airs or, or re-airs, I get a little bit of email. <laughs> That's fantastic. Hey, listen, Glenn, we're going to take a, just a brief pause for a commercial break. And when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the present, what's going on now, about your CD that you have out, and about your appearance here in Sault Ste. Marie, which is going to be on Thursday night, August the 23rd at Sioux Blasters. So uh, we'll come back to that when we return, OK? Sounds good. All right, hang tight. Thanks, Glenn. We'll be right back with more Glenn Foster on Mornings with Luann and Tim right after this. We should attack somebody. We could get away with it. They'd never suspect us. We could be the big friendly country that just snapped one day. Suddenly we're taking over the world. Everyone else says, Jesus, they were such a nice country. They were so quiet, they live right next door. We could probably take two or three countries before anyone even caught on. And if they nail us, we get off on the Young Offenders Act, hey, sir. <laughs> Big headlines around the world, a young country that could not be identified. We are back via Skype with Glenn Foster, uh, that Canadian guy, who is going to be performing at Sioux Blasters Thursday, August the 22nd, here in Sault Ste. Marie. You're uh, traveling with a couple of other fellas, is that right? I am, uh, Chris Bonaparte and uh, Liam... Uh, Oh my God! <laughs> Liam, it's Liam, Liam Kelly is his name. I can't even remember his name right That's now. Okay, it's Liam. Jeez, Kelly. I've worked with him a few times too. I he's, guess I am getting old. He's a good Irish boy, e. Liam Kelly. I've That's it, Liam Kelly. That's Liam's it. Yeah, no, he's excellent. He's going to be the MC. He's an excellent MC. He is. That's, uh, that's, and mm -hmm. it's Bonaparte, very funny as well. I hear Bonaparte. Uh, is, uh, yeah, so looking forward to it. It's going to be a very solid show, that's for sure. Says I got some stuff on Chris Bonaparte. Says he's uh, laid back, deadpan style, if you can match, and a long repertoire of hilarious, sometimes twisted jokes and stories. He's a proven crowd pleaser. And then Liam has got over 20 years of experience, and I saw a video of him at Yuck Yucks, and he's hysterical. So the three of you together, uh, what time does the show start? Do you, are, do you know I can get this information if you don't have it, but do you happen I to know? You may have to get this information, but I think it's 9 p.m. I'll double check on that, and I'll let, the, I'll let our viewers know when I go live with this tomorrow before I introduce you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your CD then. Will you have CDs available tomorrow? Do you travel with them? Well, here's the thing. Yeah. Uh, the last CD I did was sort of a combination. It was meant to be meant to be a DVD. Oh. And then we had some uh, tech technical issues uh, and huge chunks of various camera angles got 
vanished completely. Oh, no. uh, and uh, then the uh, producer got in touch with me a couple years later and said, guess what? I found some of those uh, <laughs> camera angles. No kidding. So it never was actually produced as a CD or a DVD. It exists purely digitally. Uh, and it, it cannot be, you know, I mean, you could download it and make your own CD or DVD if you wanted, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, so, and, and because we're at a point now where people really don't want the physical thing. It, it's a tough thing because in, in a show, they kind of want a souvenir. Mm -hmm. you know, so, and, and it's also an impulse buy type thing. But also, a lot of people, you know, they just have everything on their phone. They don't want anything physical. They don't want a, a you know, CD booklet cover, right. case, all that stuff, right? For sure. So what I did, and I, I wonder if I could find one sitting in front of me right now. Probably not because I am that kind of disorganized, uh, mostly disorganized. But uh, what I did was I produced a, uh, what I call a DIY CD kit. Oh. And so so basically it's just a postcard. Okay. Jeez, I wish I had one in front of me. Uh, and and uh, so what it is, is is you can cut out the cover on the back of the postcard. Yeah. And uh, if you really want a cover for your CD, uh, you can, you know, get your own plastic case, whatever. But this is sort of way more environmentally friendly as well because I'm not producing all that plastic and so on and so forth. All right. Uh, but also you can uh, uh, download, not down, you can stream. The, so you can buy the download right. of, of the audio, but you can stream the video. Because the way it works is if you buy the audio, you get the video. Okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, you know, there's sort of this notion these days that every single comic has a Netflix special. I do not have a Netflix special. So what I did was I created a Notflix special. <laughs> <laughs> and you can actually find that at mynotflixspecial.com. <laughs> Good for you. You yeah. might. Now, your humor is, it says that it's edgy, it can be edgy, and it's almost always clean, which I really respect because uh, I think that they're... I well, it's very interesting. It's very interesting that what people sort of, you know, these days we're in the age of everybody's offended by everything. And I rarely, rarely run into trouble on language because I don't swear a lot. No. It's not because I don't, you know not a prude or anything like that. I don't care if anybody else swears or, you know, does dirty material or whatever. My material is not dirty, no. per se, and, and I don't swear that much. But where I run into trouble is topics, you know, because a couple of my favorites are, are religion and politics, and those two you're not supposed to talk about at all, uh, you know, or, or Islam, because it's both. Mm -hmm. Um but but you, that's where I run into trouble, and and it's amazing when you do you know a corporate show type thing these days. They're all about oh. was well, there anything sexist or racist or remotely sexist <laughs> or racist or that might be considered sexist or racist by someone who is looking to be offended by something <laughs> sexist or racist. You, you know, like it, it's just it's just really gotten out of hand. Oh. You know, because I don't think I'm quote sexist or I mean I might have been in the past uh, slightly one or the other or both. But uh, I, I, I certainly don't consider anything I do sexist or racist, but it's a sort of all in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? It is. Well, no, I mean, as I say, I have, I have watched your specials, and I think you have observational comedy, which I love. I love that kind of stuff. Um, the stuff you do about, the, there was a, there's a joke that I'll never forget about the, the electric cars now. Okay. And that they don't make any noise. Oh, yes, and yes. That, and and that's that, actually become reality. Yeah, yeah. There's actually a company that sells, uh, I think, a little siren or whistle that you can put on the front of your car. <laughs> because because car, electric cars do not make any noise. And no. for that reason, they're dangerous. You, you right. actually said the joke was that your wife's vibrator makes more noise. Oh, than <laughs> yeah. That's a part of a whole big sequence with the punch I know the but punch, I thought that was funny the punchline is that these cars don't make any of these these like they don't make any noise I mean, my wife's vibrator makes more noise I think it's hard to tell for the screaming she, she should 
She should not be doing that in the car. That is not smart. <laughs> that is not smart. Glenn, I, I, I want to encourage uh, people in Sioux St. Marie to get down to Sioux Blasters. Now, I believe I it's do too, $15 actually. And, uh, in advance. From what I understand, it's not even, I think it's like a $15 advance. It okay, might is, even be $10 advance. 15. No, it's 15 I, advance, if, 20 at the if door. If I had anything to say about it, it would have been way higher. Well, that's what <laughs> I thought. No, Glenn, because I know you. I mean, like I said, you're just sort of iconic in Canadian comedy. And so I was when I saw the price, I thought... You can go and see Glenn Foster for fifteen dollars in advance, twenty at the door. This guy, you've been everywhere, man. So plus two other comics. Plus two other comics. Plus and two other comics. And you're gonna so, love Two Blasters. It's a great know. venue. It's it's a it's a real it's a real party place. Uh, it's right downtown. A uh, great location and super nice people there to work with. So well, I'm looking forward to it. Well, well, I'll come back to Sault Ste. Marie more often, but for sure, enjoy your time in Sault Ste. Marie on Thursday night, August twenty second, and you folks out in Sault Ste. Marie can enjoy Glenn Foster at Sioux Blasters. $15 in advance, $20 at the door, and you can find out more by visiting SueOnline.com and checking out our community calendar. So, Glenn, thank you for taking the time to visit with us today. My pleasure. And I look forward to seeing your show uh, on Thursday night. Well, I'd say hi for sure. Okay, I will. Take care. So I promised our audience that I would tell them when Glenn Foster actually appears, because Glenn wasn't sure of the timing for tonight's show. Gee, he's not witty at all, is he? No. <laughs> Sue Blasters, tonight, doors open at 8 o'clock, and the show starts at 9 o'clock. Three comedians at Sue Blasters. Sue Blasters rocking it, right? And the price, Luann. Man! At the door, 20 bucks in advance, I think 10 or 15, depending. There's an early bird, I think 10, 15, Gee, and 20. Whiz. To see three comedians in downtown Sault Ste. Marie for so and these good. guys, like I'm telling you, the quality of this. Yes. You know, just for laughs, yeah. all the comedy festivals. So there you go. Nothing to do in Sault Ste. Marie. Liar! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> there's um, lots to do. Yeah, there's always lots to do especially on a day where um, people sometimes are thinking about sex education. Why do you got to go there? Because I know you it'll get, get me going. You want to get me upset. Uh-huh, I do. He's threatening to punish teachers. Who's he? <clears throat> Not my Premier Ford, him. Not your premier, I, Doug Ford. I ref I'm like one of those Americans who say, uh, Trump is not my president, Ford is not my premier. He does not represent me. He's, he's being very... Um, uh, not moving... Um, he's stubborn. talking about protecting the parents. Mm -hmm. He's also talking about setting up um, sort of a snitch line where parents can call and say, you know what? My teacher taught my kid about this today, and that's not in the curriculum. Geez, that's not going to backfire at all. Wow. Protecting, Can you imagine? Protecting which parents? Is he protecting the transgender parents of transgender children? No, no, Is no. he protecting same-sex no. parents? Mm -mm. What about protecting the children? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't even get me started. I know. It's just... Um, and you know what? The problem is my two daughters are teachers, mm -hmm. and they have not received any new information. No. But... He is steadfastly holding to the fact that if they do not teach the new 19? curriculum, there will be repercussions, in his words. Oh, there he is. Oh, there. My friend, Hi. my friend. Oh, Hi, no. Doug. How are you? Big bully. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, they haven't received anything new, but they're being threatened that there will be repercussions if they do not teach the old Curriculum. I just saw they have nothing uh, on the old curriculum. They uh, don't have it in their possession as teachers. They don't have it. I have actually, we did this. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pull that up for later this week. Uh, we did um, a streeter, which is me. We went on the, on the street and started talking to people. And I gave you them a choice. You on the streets, of, imagine. Me on the. <laughs> um, <laughs> meet you around the corner in a half an hour. <laughs> I um, <laughs> talked to this one young lady who actually in grade nine was studying the 1998 curriculum. And then in grade 10, it switched over to the 2015 curriculum. And what a difference uh, the, you that You know what? Made That's somebody life. to talk to. Well, we Absolutely. had that interview. I'll see if I can put that together for maybe Please next do. week. Yeah, that'd be and awesome. And in the meantime, check out what Andrea Horvath says on Twitter about what Ooh. Doug Ford is trying to do with their education. Oh, my She's God. She's not a happy camper. No. Speaking of education, when we come back, we have some great people here to inspire us and motivate us and teach us about how to live better and be healthier. Stay with us on Mornings with Lou, Ann, and Tim.
with Lou, Ann, and Tim. We're having some fun this morning. Hi, Nicole. Hi. Hi, Coach Katrina. Hi, hi. This is great. High energy in the room today. You guys, obviously, you are, you're doing something right in your lives. You come into our <laughs> studio and the sun comes out. Yeah. Nicole Lamoureux. That's how you say Lamoureux? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nicole has a very interesting new business on the go. Uh, it's called Peas of Mind. P-E-A-S. Peas of Mind. <laughs> eating, uh, well, eating, no, what? Cooking, Cooking for wellness. For wellness. <laughs> As well as kickstart your health. Yes, that's the class series. And the, now, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Franchella, hello. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I answer to anything. Katrina yes. Franchella, <laughs> otherwise known as Coach Katrina. Yes. Thanks for coming in. You said you were out at Rainbow Camp today. Yes. You came all the way in from, uh, where I, are they? That's a lot. Um, Camp Wakanda. Camp Wakanda. Yes, yes. It, it's, it was hard to come away, but of course, th this was um, beautiful weather. Beautiful to how, come, yes. How are the campers doing out there? Um, you know what? The new batch has just uh, come in, and I haven't met them yet. So after um, I do this and some coaching, I'm going to go meet them. So I'm really excited. It's been great. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, Nicole, this yeah. your business all started. First of all, let's get some background on you. You are from <laughs> Sault Ste. Marie originally? Yeah. Yes. Okay, born yes. and raised. Yes. And you're back. You are a nurse too. Yes, I'm a You've diabetic done a lot of foot care nurse. <laughs> yeah. You're a what? I'm a diabetic foot care nurse. A diabetic foot care nurse. Yeah. Where did you train for that? So, like, I went to college to become a nurse, and then I trained at my work at Algoma Foot Smart. Oh. Through Sioux College. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Your background. Yes, I'm also a Suite. I moved to Toronto three times in five years trying to find myself and um, <laughs> found myself back, back home. here <laughs> yes, and in uh, doing what I love. This was um, when, I, when I became a trainer after losing 100 pounds. Everyone messaging me about training was from the Sioux, so it uh, only made sense to come back. So you yeah. lost 100 pounds through training. Yes. And you and, lost. And nutrition. And nutrition. But, but yeah. like more of a fitness focus. More of a fitness regime was yeah. ha was responsible yes. for your weight loss. The majority of it was, was fitness. But you did yes. change your diet too. Yes. You yes. Because you can't do just one. No. And keep it off. Yes. Right? And keep it off. It's That's, about the maintenance. It. It's about mm -hmm. the maintenance. Mm -hmm. You have also lost. 75 pounds. Like, honestly, <laughs> between the two of you, you, you lost me. Yeah, well, you know what? Now it's uh, now it's more like fifty pounds lost, but like we don't have to get into the details. Yeah. No, we don't have to get into right? But this is why I need Nicole. Yeah. Nicole, I think Mike might have a photo up there. You are before and after. Yay. Oh, look. Well, you were you were beautiful no matter yes. what. I mean, you're a gorgeous woman. Mm -hmm. But uh, you you feel? How do you feel? Great. Yeah, so much more energy, and that's why I want to. That's why I started going to Christina's because Katrina because. I have energy now, so I was like, why not? <laughs> Did exercise? you discover Katrina after you lost some weight? Yes. Okay, so yeah. you came to weight loss through diet. Yes. Tell me about, and, and nutrition. Yes. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that journey about how you educated yourself and then yeah. began to lose the weight through yeah. changing your diet? Go ahead. Yeah, so um, when I was, about six years ago, I was pretty much given up on weight loss because I tried every diet you could think of <laughs> and like slim fast and weight watchers and all those things that like I would lose a couple pounds and then gave, gain 10 more. And I just mm -hmm. felt like I was always hungry and it wasn't something I could sustain. And then um, I came, I was on like, you know, a Netflix documentary right. binge and I came across the Netflix uh, documentary Forks Over Knives. Forks Over Knives. Yeah. So after watching that, I was intrigued. So I watched more and more and tried to look for as many as I could find. And I thought, why not? I'll try this. Was Forks Over Knives a documentary that was based on a book? Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. It was, uh, they based it off of doctors that, uh, that, got together and decided we need to share this with the world because they they recommend a plant-based diet. Plant-based yeah. diet, which others, we could call it veganism. A vegan diet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's exactly. one step beyond vegetarianism, yeah. is that right? Yes. Sort of? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's no animal products, but also no, no, no dairy or eggs or fish. Ooh, you don't do any dairy or no. eggs? No. <gasps> yeah. Okay, you know what? Just yesterday, I was down at... Um, the country way. Yeah. And somebody had just stopped by with a ricotta, a non-dairy ricotta cheese. Mm -hmm. You guys, I had it on a fresh fig. Mm -hmm. I could not believe it was, was so non-dairy. Yeah, I yes. had it. So this is what you, this is the kind yeah. of stuff you eat. Yeah. And the results you discovered were what, yeah, more so, beneficial to just weight loss. You discovered yes, a lot exactly. of stuff. Exactly. Tell me So more. after I lost weight, I was really interested in it. So I thought, like, I want to learn more. So I got every book I could find by every doctor that uh, <laughs> recommended this way of eating. And I read them all and found out it was so good for not only weight loss, but for diabetes, for heart disease, for weight loss, for... Um, arthritis for so many things. For mental health. Yeah, for mental health, definitely. Mm. Yeah. That's like the, yeah. So then after that, I thought, well, how do I share this with the world? Because mm -hmm. I didn't really, 
have, as a nurse, I don't really have the background to teach people um, facts about this lifestyle because I didn't have that knowledge or that education. Okay. So the program I took now, now I do. So where did you go? You yeah. went to Washington, D.C.? Yeah. And you studied with this guy. What's his name? Is he So, big... yeah, Neil Barnard, um, Dr. Neil Barnard. He's he, a big guy. He's, he's a big name. Yeah. <laughs> Even I knew that name, and I know nothing about weight loss, but I knew the name. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he's the founder and president of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, and they're the ones that um, offer the Food for Life program. Food for Life. And you went down, you studied the program. Yeah. You got, and so you became certified? Yeah, mm -hmm. certified instructor of Food for Life. For Food for Life. And then you came back to the Sioux. And when did you meet up with Coach mm -hmm. Katrina? <laughs> Oh, when was, I don't remember when the first day was, it been, like a, a few months ago, it, more in the beginning of this year, um, and Nicole started to talk about um, her transition to veganism, and since I started my journey five years ago, from the beginning, I've always said, I want to be vegan, like I'm going to be vegan. If anyone has asked me, it's like, yes, someday I will. Um, and just, you know, like everyone else, excuses pile up in my book, and I'm Italian, and that's <laughs> like, I would probably be kicked out of my family, so um, I, um, but it's been a goal of mine, and it's been a goal of mine to introduce uh, nutrition as well and so when um, Nicole came to me with this class I was like perfect beautiful we're gonna go to a commercial break quickly when we come back we'll talk about this the beautiful marriage <laughs> of the two and uh, how it's all going down and the classes that you're offering through C coach Katrina's uh, gym yes all right so stay with us more coming up our mornings with Lou Ann and Tim we'll be right back perfect <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about where you're located. First of all, Coach Katrina. Yes, so 640, 642 Queen Street East, also um, more known as the Paul Mall. The so Paul right Mall. across from the Grand Theater, Unit 1. You'll see a big, big rainbow flag hanging in my window. You can't miss it. Rainbow flag because you are an inclusive gymnasium? Yes, yes. yes. So I, I wanted to open a female fitness facility, but then I also realized that uh, there was uh, something more I could do to be inclusive. So I say that I am also LGBTQ, 2S plus um, inclusive. That's a beautiful thing. Yes. And you also, it, there's a little bit, it, it's a bit of a different spin, your gym, the way you've decorated it, the way yes. that you laid it all out, because you don't want to intimidate people. Exactly. You've been there, done that. Yes. You've lost 100 pounds. Yes. You were a person of size. Mm -hmm. And now you understand that maybe the, the, the key thing is motivation. Yes. So many people, I think, are afraid to take that first step, to go oh. into a gym. Yes. And so you wanted to make it feel not that intimidating. Explain yes. that a little bit. Well, um, and, and so I thought, because I, um, you know, um, my mental health, like, hasn't always been the greatest, and I've been very nervous of gyms myself, so I thought, you know, go get your training certification, you won't be. And I found that even when I had the knowledge, I was still terrified to go uh, into gyms. So I said, well, I might as well uh, make my and try and do something new and so that's what I've done it doesn't really look like a gym there's positive affirmations everywhere and bright colors and children can come children and can come children can come yes so wait, you can bring your child and while you work out there's a play area for the yes, kids yes there's a play area sometimes the babies just stay there and, and it's a big open space I love open spaces so they can be working out and they can see their child so if something starts to happen they just go over and, and do and sometimes the it. kids join in Absolutely, and that is the best part of it that. all. It brings, and when they start to work out and like follow us and you can see them watching and they start to do it, immediately the, the mood changes in the room. Everyone laughs, and so it's not like, I'm a drill sergeant. That is like the opposite of me. I'm like a cheerleader, and then there's the kids to kind of bring the energy up as well. So it's like I, I, I right now I feel like I have a buzz on. Yeah. Like you, there's something about the energy in the studio right now. It's like, oh. Yes. So tell me, you were a client of Coach yes. Katrina's, yes. and this is how it all began. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now, where, where, what level have you taken this to now with this new partnership? Tell me how you're working this. Uh, your piece of Peace, yeah, of, peace mind, of mind, cooking for, <laughs> cooking wellness. for wellness. Yeah, so um, it's really awesome that we get to work together and help each other. So mm -hmm. in September, I'm not only teaching the classes, but I'm also taking her consistency challenge. So that motivates me to go to the gym 
all often mm -hmm. to like start seeing more results and then she's taking my classes with she's going to be there obviously mm -hmm. so we're helping each other to um and yeah finally giving veganism a go i've been yeah. saying it for five years have you started I, yet well you know what i i've tried to implement more plants in my life but i definitely feel like well i have an eating disorder so i feel like i'm like hoarding meat right now because i know that this is like a, <laughs> it's about to happen but i feel like i'm a normal person and like normal people do things like that so um but no, I am 100% giving it a go come September because, like, it's it's for us, but it's, we also want to show everyone that, like, it's possible, and we're just normal gals who changed our life, and and it you can do it, too. All right, so I have a question for you, Nicole. Um, you talk about adopting a, a vegan diet. Yeah. Is it possible for a person to... Um, not go completely vegan, but yeah. like ease into it. Is that definitely? You know, sometimes it's like it's a cult, and you yeah. have to go completely <laughs> yeah. vegan. And no, they no, come into no, the no, restaurants, no, no, and no. I need oh, macrobiotic vegan. Yes. Uh, you don't necessarily no. have to. No. I mean, obviously, yeah. when you make when you make it's that commitment, ideal. it's yeah. ideal. Yeah. But it's possible just to try some different. Yeah, vegan exactly. So the program, actually, the Food for Life program, the first week of it, it does encourage people to try 21 days of it, just to see how you feel mm -hmm. and commit that 21 days. But the first week is finding options and seeing what you like and not changing over, trying a couple of meals and then even trying a 21 day. And then after the 21 days, if you wanted to incorporate small amounts, it would, obviously it's ideal to do it all, but if you can't, it's any step towards a plant-based diet will improve your health. Yes. Plants are pretty too. Show some pretty yeah. pictures of yes. the pretty plants. You brought some pretty pictures of pretty plants. Uh, what kind of, what's one of your favorite vegan um, um, recipes. Oh, there's so many. I make. I love to make lentil tacos. I like to make veggie burgers and sweet potato yes. fries. I love to make chilies. I, I'm in the kitchen all yes, the time. It doesn't have to be yeah. boring yeah. and awful and tasteless. Mm. It can be amazing. It just mm -hmm. might take a little extra Ooh, work, but then eventually those. once you get used to it, yes. Beautiful vegetables. It is beautiful. Uh, <laughs> a chili. I would like a vegan oh, chili. So mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the first things we make in the first class of the Food for Life. Wait a minute. Where do you do the classes? At the gym. At yes. the gym. Oh, look, there it is. Food for life. Yes. So wait, the classes you actually do at Coach Katrina's gym? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how do you prepare this? I mean, what, what? tell me how that works. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm going to bring like a hot plate and my Vitamix. And these recipes are so easy that you don't need much to make them. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll, I'll have lots of the things prepped, but I'll prep some of them there. I'll even, some of the recipes will cook. I'll cook Together. there. Can you yes. do crock pot stuff for vegans? Yeah, yes. definitely. Oh, there's I have so many cookbooks. Yes. That there's a whole crock pot cookbook. Yes. I'm the the info, the info yeah. is out there. We just got, you know, we just have to um, uh, work on it, you know. Okay, I have, to, I have to, get, I have, a, I've lost a little bit of weight just by changing my diet, but I would yes. totally be interested in coming down and trying out Coach mm -hmm. Katrina to get rid of the mm -hmm. lat, to firm up my little belly. Yes. I need to firm my little belly up. <laughs> and I would like to try that yeah. 21 day. I'm a major carnivore, so this would be huge for me to mm -hmm. give it a whirl. Mm -hmm. But I, I'd be willing to try just to see how I feel. Exactly. Yes. It's It doesn't hurt to try, right? And it might not be for everyone, but our hope is that if we could help to influence a few, um, and even that's as you powerful. say, to incorporate more exactly. of that diet that's into it. our routine. Yes. If, I, if I don't go com completely yeah. vegan, at least to have the options of these healthy meals. Exactly. Yes. It doesn't have to be breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Meat, meat, meat. It could be yes. a couple days a week that you do plant based. Uh -huh. Okay. So when does this all start? Like when did we start your class? September 9th. Second week, yes, the yeah. 9th. The, the 9th of September, 9th. September? Yes. is the Sunday, and then we're going to do it every Sunday and Thursday. Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock, Thursday nights at 6.30. Do people have to register in advance? Yeah. Yes, they do, and they okay. can contact Nicole or I about doing so. How do they contact you? Um, they can contact me, um, Coach Katrina, on like all social media. And you spell coach with a K coach to go with, with Katrina. Coach with a K, K-O-A-C-H-K-A-T-R-I-N-A. <laughs> She yes. has her own theme song. Yeah, I just made that up right now. It was good. <laughs> I think I need you one. got a jingle. Yeah. Okay, and then and so, Nicole. Yes. Yeah. So and then you could email me at peas of mine. P e a s. Peas of mine. Peas of mine. S s m at gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. Is it peas of mine? S s m all one word. Yes. Peas of mine. S s m. And at what? At gmail.com. Gmail and how mm -hmm. did I find you? Oh, I found you in an article. Yeah, yeah, Sue This Week. Sue This Week, mm -hmm. a great article. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, listen, um, I'm excited. Thank you for bringing this amazing energy and uh, mm -hmm. all of this positivity into the studio today. I'm looking forward to hanging out with you guys. I'm going to come down to that mm -hmm. studio. Maybe we'll do it on better. location. Me yeah. working out with you. Oh, for sure. Ooh, we can catch, <laughs> catch you cooking. Okay, yes. <laughs> so stay with us. We'll be back with more mornings with Luann and Tim. And thanks again to Coach Katrina and Nicole Lemaru from Peace of Mind Cooking for Wellness. We'll be right back.
Well, I hope you enjoyed the show this morning. What energy. I know. My goodness, that was lovely. Fabulous. And tomorrow we have a great show for you as well. We're going to have some music on the show with Catherine Tato, accompanied by Rusty McCarthy, coming into our studio. And of course, it's also Humane Society Friday. Yay! Everybody here is so happy when it's Friday and the little pooch comes in, or the little cat, or the, the rabbit. You're such a liar. Everybody's so happy. You don't even like dogs. No. She won't even do the segment with me. No, I said everybody. I didn't include myself. <laughs> I'm scared of the teeth. They all have teeth in their head. <laughs> so do you know? I. You better Just watch saying. out. Yeah. Uh, listen, we'll see you tomorrow morning with uh, the entertainment and uh, the news again. Yes, so. always. Yes. Absolutely. Thanks for such a good job this morning. And thank you, Luann. As always. And thank you for watching. Have an awesome day.